there. How are you doing today? Do you feel like doing a little bit of spring slash Easter DIYing with me today? Well, come on in. Let's get started. What do I have going on for you for today? Well, today I'm bringing to you some Dollar Tree spring slash Easter DIYs that are quick easy and budget friendly and they are ones I think you are absolutely gonna love. So guess what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna keep this short and sweet. I'm gonna quit my gabbing. Let's jump into it and let's do some spring Dollar Tree DIYing on a budget because that's what we do here. Let's get to it. Who is today's KB Creations Crafter of the Day? You'll want to stick around to the end of the video to see if it's your creation that's being featured in today's video. For this first DIY, you're gonna need some rubber rain boots. These are kids, size 11, 12, that you can get at Walmart. It says $14.98, but guess what? They're on clearance right now for $5. So go pick up a pair and do this DIY with me. On the inside of the boots there in the middle, I'm gonna take some scissors and I'm gonna put a slit in there making a hole because I want to hang these later. Originally, I started off by using spray paint. It says that it bonds to plastic. I don't know why I was thinking these were plastic. They're rubber, it never dried, so don't do that. I had a hot mess, ended up having to clean it off and going in with some multi-surface satin paint by Apple Barrel, this dark granite. It did the trick. I couldn't get all of the spray paint off so you can see how it kind of gave it a crackled effect. I liked it, so I went with it. I'm taking some thicker twine and sticking it through those holes, tying it off because this is gonna be a hanger to these boots. I added some flowers, a twine bow, and look at how quick and easy this DIY is, how stinking adorable it is for a front door. It screams spring. These flower picks you can find at Walmart for 97 cents a piece. I loved them. If you don't wanna paint the boots, keep them pink and put in some pink flowers. Maybe set them on your front porch if you don't wanna hang them. Super cute either way. For this next DIY, I will be using one of these new galvanized metal pails. I cut out a decal on my Cricut for Carrot Farms, 25 cents. I'm gonna add that to the front of it. When you've got a Cricut, you can always utilize it and do easy things like this. Dollar Tree has vinyl, so pick up a roll of vinyl if you have a Cricut and don't be intimidated to use it because it's a fantastic machine that once you have it, if it's been gifted to you, will save you a ton of money. So yeah, this decal is going right on the front of this tin. We are keeping it short, sweet, and simple because why not? Because we can. Dollar Tree's got a couple different sizes in twine carrots. So I'm gonna use the larger and the smaller ones. I'm gonna place some paper towel here in the bottom of this pail, tin galvanized pail, pail, planter, pail, bucket, what is it? Anyway, I'm gonna start off with the larger twine carrots and I'm gonna hot glue them to the back and I'm gonna layer them with those smaller twine carrots. Before jumping into all these quick and easy DIYs, I'd like to start off by showing you the colors, the theme of this tray. Craft Smart is a lot of the paint that I will be using because they had a lot of the pastel colors, the pinks, the blues, the purples, the greens, the yellow, and then I think I even went with a vanilla. The only color outside of Craft Smart that I did mix on my own was the orange. I need a pastel orange, so I'm gonna make my own out of Hello Hobby's pumpkin orange and some of Waverly's white chalk paint. For this first DIY, I'm gonna be using these wood Easter spring ornaments that I got from Dollar Tree last year. These were in my stash, thank goodness. It's amazing what organizing your craft stash does. You know what you got. So I'm gonna use the bunny, the carrot, and this egg, taking some Mod Podge, gloss, matte, you choose. I'm gonna give these ornaments a nice, good coating of Mod Podge. This is the base coat because what am I gonna cover these with? Can you take a guess? Yes, burlap, of course. What else would I cover these with? These are actually scrap pieces that I kept. I do keep my scrap pieces because look, this size is perfect 
for these ornaments and so you never know when you're gonna use them I just put them in a Ziploc baggie and keep them and one day they come out if they don't come out for years then I end up tossing them once I've got my ornaments good and covered up with some burlap I'm gonna go in with a second coat of Mod Podge over the top of that burlap to really adhere it onto the ornaments and it's also going to stiffen that burlap so it makes it easier to cut off the excess burlap from around the ornaments. I will tell you from my experience, when you're cutting off that excess fabric, especially burlap, it is easiest if you do it with a nice, fresh, sharp blade. One, it makes it easier, and two, it's gonna give you those nice, clean edges along your wood piece or whatever piece it is you're covering. There's gonna be no fraying. I want my ornaments to stand up, and I found the easiest way to do that is to use some of Dollar Tree's cubes and the Jenga blocks. So just by standing your piece up, then gluing the pieces onto the back, you are going to ensure that your piece stands up nicely and it won't fall forward. If you glue the Jenga block onto your piece while it's laying down, you may not get the right placement. And I found that when I did it that way, my piece tended to fall forward a lot. So just stand your piece up and you'll see that, yes, look, it stands up nicely, just like that. Yes, perfect, see? Easy peasy. To this burlap, I'm gonna paint it. I am. Why am I painting burlap instead of just painting the piece itself? Because burlap has textured and I like colored burlap and it gives it a more rustic farmhouse look. And even though this is a tear tray, I'm still going for that rustic look, even with texture. Look at how cute that carrot came out with just a little bit of detailing and some stitching. I'm feeling like I wanna switch things up. This is gonna be a purple bunny, and boy oh boy, is this piece gonna be a cute one. Wait until you see what I do with this. This year, Crafter Square came out with these adorable mini ornaments, 14 come in a pack. When I saw them at Dollar Tree, I snatched up a pack of each of them. These bunnies are adorable, the eggs, Oh my goodness, wait for it. The carrots are even cuter. And the chicks, these are gonna make for such adorable embellishments to add to this tiered tray. So for this bunny, first I'm gonna finish it off with a raffia bow. Yes, I'm going raffia this time instead of twine. And to the back of each of these three bunnies that I painted different colors, cause why not? I'm adding some of Dollar Tree's foam tape or puppy tape because I wanted to elevate these bunnies up off of the bigger bunny. To the center bunny, I'm gonna add three or four layers of the foam tape because look at what I do with these. Look at how cute that is. It gives it dimension and the pink bunny's eye is dripping. I'm gonna have to fix that. Good thing I pointed that out, but yeah, I will fix it. But look at how cute this piece turned out using those mini ornaments. For the egg, I wanted to keep it simple. I went in with some yellow and I decorated the egg just like you would any other Easter egg, a regular Easter egg. Although I forgot to press record on that. So here's the finished egg. So easy and such a fun piece to add to our pastel Easter tiered tray. For the next DIY, I'll be using some moss covered bunnies. You're getting three in a pack for $1.25, which is a great buy because Dollar Tree does have the ceramic ones that are about the same size as these that you can paint. But why would you buy those if you can get three in this pack unless you can't get your hands on these moss covered bunnies? Then those ceramic ones are a great alternative. I'm gonna give these moss covered bunnies a good coating of some paint. I think that the moss adds texture to it, which then in turn adds personality and character. I'm gonna paint each of these bunnies a different color, and I figured I'd go with the colors of green, orange, and purple, because why not? Each of these cute bunnies needs to be finished off with a raffia ribbon around its neck, and why not add a bow as well? The green one was a bit taller and bigger, so I figured that this would be a fun one to add one of those cute carrot ornaments to as well.
This DIY is a repeat. I love this one because it adds height to the tear tray and that's what we want, different heights. Dollar Tree has several of these types of frames, so if you can't find this tulip one, you're good to go with a circle one, a heart one, you pick. Since they had a tulip, tulip scream spring, right? Try and say that three times, that felt like a tongue twister. And so with this, I figured I'd go in with the purple for the flower itself. And of course, the base is gonna be green. Because this is a frame, it needs something to go in it, right? Yes, got that covered. Linda's designed an embellishment pack to go along with this pastel themed Easter tray. These here are the embellishments that I will be using for this here tray. It is a mixture of die cut embellishments and a vinyl decal for those books because I really like the vinyl decals on the books. This embellishment pack is available in Linda's Etsy store for instant digital download which means if you have a Cricut, you're gonna buy that option because it's cheaper. You're gonna download it to your computer, upload it to Cricut Design Space, you're gonna print and cut it out, and you can do that as many times as you'd like. If you don't have a Cricut, well, we've got that covered too. Linda will cut and send it to you with free shipping for the bargain price of $6. You can find the link to Linda's Etsy store, guess where? Mm-hmm, in the description box below. And so this is the die cut embellishment that she has designed to go inside this tulip. Now keep in mind, these embellishments are designed to go with the pieces that I am using on my tiered tray. The color theme also goes along with the colors that I'm using as well, but the vinyl decals are available in black or white, your choice. And so this one is gonna go right in here, but we are not done with this one yet because the stitching is adorable, but the base needs something. And because I have those adorable mini ornaments, yes, these are going to be appearing all over this tiered tray because I cannot stand how stinking cute they are. Okay, seriously, I don't think this frame has ever looked so cute. For this next one, I'm gonna be using one of these wood boxes, wood chest. Guess what, this is a two-in-one DIY. Yeah, we're getting two DIYs with one piece. I'm gonna start off by removing all of the hardware on the box itself. All you need is a mini screwdriver and the hardware comes off fairly easy. I'm gonna start off with the base of the box. You're also gonna need one of these wood cars because I'm gonna utilize the wheel on it. So I'm gonna cut it off. Yeah, you're gonna need some heavy duty scissors to do that. Then I'm just gonna take and place a dot, a hot glue on the side of the wheel itself, and I'm gonna place it on the bottom part of my box. Cause what are we making? A wheelbarrow, how cute is that? It's so fun. I've got some mini popsicle sticks in my stash, so I'm gonna attach them to the other side just like so in the corners. If you don't have mini popsicle sticks, just cut a regular popsicle stick in half. What I'm actually really liking about this tray is all the different colors. And so that was the part I wasn't anticipating having a lot of fun with. And so because I have a variety of colors that I'm incorporating into this tray, I can really make things fun and colorful. And so with this wheelbarrow, I decided to go with the barrel part of it being blue and the tire and the handles are gonna be green. Of course, I added some stitching to it and there is an adorable embellishment, die cut embellishment that is going to fit perfectly on the side and on the front, I just had to add one of these adorable carrots. These wood ornaments are the perfect embellishments for tiered trays. I wish that they would come out with them more often. To fill the wheelbarrow up, I decided to incorporate some of the smaller twine carrots. Three of them to be exact. So cute, right? What a fun piece out of those wood boxes. Now for the lid, I'm gonna go ahead and replace some of the hardware. This would be the piece that the latch hooked onto. I'm gonna replace it onto the lid just like so because what am I making? I'm making a front door, why not? This is perfect for that. We utilize all the pieces of this box. 
I think this door should get a good coating of the yellow paint. And I think for this, I'll go with the yellow and purple theme, cause why not? Very spring. This door has an adorable wreath embellishment that says, welcome spring. How cute is that? Love that. And of course, I'm gonna add a purple bunny, cause why not? I have them, so why not add it? This light box is another fun piece to add to the tray because it adds a light element. So just another element that's a bit different. Love this, count your blessings, is perfect for this spring and Easter tray. So with this, I decided to give it a good coating of this pastel orange. And this deserves a raffia bow, right? Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Haha, <laughs> that was totally cheesy. Oh my word. Okay, I better stop. For this tray, I really wanted to try and incorporate pieces that weren't of a seasonal nature from Dollar Tree that come out only for spring and Easter time. And so this cloud is definitely one of those pieces. This is a newer piece at Dollar Tree. They've got a heart as well. I picked up a few of them because I thought that they were such cute pieces to add to trays if I continued on with the series, which I'm doing by popular request. And so because this is a cloud, of course it's gonna get a good coating of some light blue paint and some stitching. For those of you who say that you have a hard time applying the stitching, I find that it is best to water down your paint a bit. It goes on a lot smoother, it's not as thick, and when applying it, the brush that you wanna use is the thinnest bristle brush that you can find so you get those nice, thin, even stitch marks. And that really is, I think, the trick behind adding stitching and take your time. And it doesn't have to be perfect because the more imperfect it is, the more perfect it is. And it adds character. It gives it that quilted look, that handmade quilted look. And for this adorable cloud DIY, the embellishment says spring is in the air. I know, pun intended. These wood plaques were another fun find early on at Dollar Tree. I found a bunny and an egg, and so yes, these two shall be incorporated into this tray. I started off by giving the edges just a quick coating of some pink paint because to the front of these, no, I'm not gonna add burlap, even though I am applying Mod Podge, I decided to go with a printed fabric just to add a bit of a pattern to the tray break things up a bit. And this here is the fabric that I am using to cover the front of these here wood plaques. Haha. <laughs> this is a fat quarter that you can find at Walmart for a dollar. It is sold with their single fat quarters. They have a lot of really fun colors and patterns. And again, that is just what I was hoping to incorporate into the tray by using this fabric. What good are these wood plaques on our tray if they're not gonna stand up? You can't see them lying down. So again, I'm just gonna add some Jenga blocks to the back of them, standing them up, because these two are going to get an embellishment that Linda designed. And again, when I do put these die cut embellishments on the pieces for my tiered tray, I do like to do so using the foam tape because it elevates it up off the piece. It gives it a completely different look when you use the foam tape. It gives it that two dimensional look versus just gluing the embellishment onto the piece itself. And so I personally just like the look of it, but if you don't wanna add the foam tape, you can always glue it just onto the piece itself. And for this egg, this cute embellishment with a couple of the die cut flowers that come in the pack as well. Next up, these dessert glasses. You're getting three in this pack, but we only need two of them, which means you're gonna have an extra one for another tier tray. And with these, 
I'm gonna give one a good coating of the blue pastel paint. Notice I said pastel, not rustic. And for this one, I'm gonna go with the pastel pink. Now, because this is a thinner acrylic paint, you are going to need a few coats to get full coverage. But as Kayla just enlightened me about, she said, or I can just glob it on because as she has seen me do in some of my videos that she did voiceovers on, she said, I just kind of glob it on. So why not just glob it on or do coats? I, I actually did coats. I'm not globbing it on with this one. I painted a couple of the mini egg wood ornaments. I didn't show painting them because in all honesty, I wanna say I painted a few of everything before I got started because I knew I'd wanna use them and then I just kind of paired them up with the DIYs, truth be told. But I thought that these eggs would be such an adorable embellishment to add to what is going to be these Sundays. Now, I had some pink sand in my stash. This was actually an alley stash when we cleaned out a room and I didn't throw it away because I knew I could use it for something like this. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill up these glasses. The sand is acting like a space filler. Then taking some Dollar Tree's caulking. Yes, this is a white caulking in the tool section that you can get. This is not a craft item. I'm gonna use this for the whipped cream topping for our shakes slash sundaes. How fun is that? What's great about using caulking is one, it keeps its shape when it dries, so we've got that permanent cute whipped cream topping look. And two, I don't think there is a two, just one. It keeps its shape and it's budget friendly. It's a dollar for a tube and a little goes a long way. To the pink shake, I added some of the pink sand as you saw. And for the blue one, I did have some blue sand that it looks like I must be digging out right now and looking for. There we go. And so I figured I'd add some blue sand to the top of this one. I had some paper straws that I just hauled from Dollar Tree in the pastel colors. Dollar Tree's got some really cute plates and straws out right now. So I went ahead and cut them down real low and I'm just gonna add them to each of the Sundays. And I thought I'd switch up the colors and add the blue straw to the pink one and the pink straw to the blue one. Oh my word, can I say it? These are so stinking cute. I love these Sundays. Next up, I'm gonna be using these wood drawers, only I'm not using the outer part of the drawer. I'm just using the inner part of the drawer, the drawer itself with this cute butterfly on it. Gave it a quick coating of some blue paint and some stitching to the inside of this pot. I'm gonna add some paper towel as filler because I am out of floral foam. I am. I didn't want to stop filming to get it, so yeah. And I'm gonna add some moss right in there in the hole of the butterfly because one, I think it's really cute, and two, it, see there is a two for this one. It's gonna hide the paper towel. Fun, right? If you don't want the moss to fall out, spray some hairspray. To this pot, I thought it'd be fun to add a carrot, a cute carrot, I love it. You can add a bunny if you want, add a bunny, add a chick. These are flowers that I had in my stash and I thought they'd be perfect. Finished off the top with more moss and look at how cute that spring bouquet is. Birdhouses are nothing new to my tear tray. As most of you know, they are one of my favorite pieces to add. Don't know why, they just are because they are so stinking cute. So to this birdhouse, I decided to start off with some yellow paint and do the house itself yellow and finish the roof off with some green. I went with some orange stitching for this house because I'm adding two of these cute chicks that I painted orange and I thought it'd just kind of tie everything in together. And so right here on the perch, I'm gonna put this first chick and I thought it'd be fun to switch things up a bit and put a second chick right there on the roof of the house. How fun is this piece? And of course, we can't forget that the top of this birdhouse needs a raffia bow. What a fun addition to this birdhouse, putting a new spin on it, adding these cute little chicks. Next up, 
on this cute spring decor egg with the letter B. They had several eggs with several different letters on them, so I picked up B for, hmm, I wonder. This yellow isn't the right color, so I'm gonna give this egg a quick makeover, making it suit our pastel tiered tray. Ah, perfect. Just the makeover that this egg needed. How about this wood thankful decor piece? Only this piece was in my stash and it is broken and missing a light. So I figured, you know what? I really want the word thankful on here. So I'm just gonna take this apart and utilize it for the front part that just says thankful. Cause why not? And to this, it's gonna get a good couple coats of the pastel pink paint. And I think some purple stitching will fit it nicely along with, why not? a blue bunny at the bottom. On the back side, I did add a couple of Jenga blocks so I could stand this piece up as well. Next up, if you take a one by four piece of lumber and cut it into five inch pieces, you're gonna make yourself some books to add to that tiered tray. I like to do my books in three different colors. So for these books, I'm gonna go with blue, yellow, and orange. These books got some stitching in the colors of white and purple. And this one has the vinyl decal that says, Happy Easter, every bunny. Now remember, this vinyl is available in white and black. And instead of going with a twine bow on top, I figured I'd finish it off with three of these adorable carrots. I typically add a strand of beads to my tray, but this time I wanted to do a garland. And so using this burlap ribbon, I cut it to about 24 inches, which is two feet. And on each end, I'm gonna just kinda hot glue a loop there on each end. It doesn't have to be very big at all. And to this banner, yes, I'm gonna add these adorable wood ornaments, these mini wood ornaments. How cute are these? What a fun alternative to the beads. I really love the way the beads look when they're done, but truth be told, it is my least favorite piece to add to the tray because I really dread painting the beads. I love adding them, but painting those beads is the biggest pain. I put them on pipe cleaner, I paint them, but it is just a pain. And so I thought that it would be fun to switch it up and make a cute garland. Oh my word, that turned out so stinking cute. I can't wait to see it on the tray. Dollar Tree's got these really cool wood blocks. They come in several different shapes. We've got a circle, a square, and this shape here. These are easy to DIY and incorporate into any tier tray just by painting it to suit that tray theme. These would be a great alternative for the books as well. If you don't want to have lumber cut, you can use this shape book and stack three of them and you'd have books if you don't mind the decorative edge. I think it would still be a fun piece to add. But to this piece, I am going to give it, you see what color I'm painting it, this pastel purple. Because what is the theme of this tray? Not rustic. It's a pastel themed tray and I am loving all the cuteness. To this, I'm gonna add a die cut embellishment that Linda designed using my foam tape to adhere it and it says spring and how fun is that die cut? I am loving the colors. And to this, I painted one of these cute little wood chicks yellow just to bring out the yellow in the die cut and cover up the hole because I didn't use spackling. Look at how cute that is. Rolling pin, this is another one that is a repeat item. You can find these rolling pins on Amazon. Link is in the description box below for my Amazon store. Painted it orange with some cream stitching and thought it'd be fun to add a yellow carrot. Are there yellow carrots? I know there's purple ones. Yes, a yellow carrot. How cute is that? I love this. Last up, I picked up one of these house shadow boxes that Dollar Tree just started carrying again, at least mine anyway. Thought it would be adorable just to add some pink to the background, the green to the outside, add some stitching, and a good excuse to add more of these adorable mm -hmm, mini wood ornaments. I thought I'd hang a carrot from the peak of the house there and do a rabbit in each corner 
into the inside of this. Linda did a die cut embellishment. What a fun piece. What a fun piece to close with. Let's go take a look at this tiered tray all put together. Who is today's KB Creations Crafter of the Day? It's going out to Brenda Cochran, who's bringing to us this oldie but goodie, a recreation of my DIY candle holders. These were for a wedding centerpiece. It was a subscriber request, I wanna say five years ago, and to this day, it is still one of my favorite Dollar Tree DIYs. Thank you, Brenda, so much for bringing back this oldie but goodie and sharing your recreation with us today. I don't know that I could pick a favorite. Too many to choose from? Let me know what your favorite was in the comments below. I hope you all enjoyed today's Dollar Tree Spring DIYs. If you're looking for more inspiration, guess what? You can click on the video right over here and it'll take you to some of my past favorites. Until next time, everybody, I hope you have a fantastic day. Happy crafting on a budget. Stay happy, stay safe, stay healthy, but most of all, you know what I'm gonna say. Stay positive, please, because I am. Bye for now, everybody.